apologies in advance. Okay, it's 602 and I'm opening this meeting of the Economic Development Committee, calling it to order. I'm going to read the chair's statement. This meeting is be rec being recorded by the Economic Development Committee. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Not hearing any. In accordance to yada yada, no person shall address the meeting of a public body without permission of the chair, and all persons shall, at the request of the chair, be silent. Uh, I'm going to leave out the stuff about dragging you out of the uh, room because <laughs> we're not in a room. Okay, now I will attempt to do the roll call. Uh, I have to find the right thing. Okay. Uh, uh, Council, I'm Councillor Elmer, and I'm here. Councillor Bullock, not here yet. I'll get back to her. Councillor Disorger, here. Councillor Healy, here. Councillor Mayo, here. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we'll proceed to the agenda, which is a different document. Uh, there is, uh, oh, approval of minutes, October 6th, October 11th, and November 17th. Anybody see anything there they'd like to change? Tammy did her homework for this. Uh, do I have a motion to accept them as posted? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, if you approve, uh, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Good. All right. There are no public hearings, uh, and we are going to open the floor up to public comment. And I think I should say something before we get to that. Uh, this is <laughs> with permission from the city council and the clerk's office. And as advertised in the Greenfield Recorder last Friday, I'm going to open this meeting up not for public hearing. We did that last month at a joint hearing of the planning board and the EDC, but for comment from people who, through no fault of their own, didn't know how to attend that meeting. Let me just go back and see if anybody else has shown up at Zoom. No, I think we're okay. All right. Uh, we're, con we're commenting on one topic, the rezoning of, I believe it's 48 acres on the south side of French King Highway from general commercial to planned industrial. And I'm gonna give the briefest possible history, which is not easy because it's a complicated story. But in 1993, nearly 30 years ago, after Stop and Shop opened their store on the Northeast side of town, the city council voted to create an overlay district to prevent strip development along the French King Highway. The land originally zoned industrial was rezoned General Commercial, 11 years old, later in 2004, to allow a big box store to build uh, on an abandoned sand pit on the south side of the highway. Controversy and litigation followed. We'll skip forward 15 years to 2019. <laughs> Funding for a new library uh, came before the city council and as part of a compromise to win the last vote, needed to fund the library, the council voted to lift most of that overlay district that had prevented fast food restaurants, gas station, and the long awaited box store. So that got lifted. Uh, a referendum to overturn the library vote was defeated later that year. This land originally zoned industrial was rezoned in 2004 to general commercial to allow that big box store. Uh, I think I'm now repeating myself. Uh, the, a year later, uh, the appeals court uh, issued a special permit for 135,000 square foot big box store on the property. When that permit lapsed this year, after two years or just before two years, the mayor proposed rezoning it to planned industrial to permit business in the industrial park that had that needed industrial space to expand. Uh, the planning board initiated the zoning change and forwarded a positive recommendation to the city council. The EDC postponed their vote until this meeting so we could hear all the pros and cons and get a better sense of what the public wanted to done with the land, which has laid fallow for nearly two decades. All right, sorry for that long preamble, but with that, uh, here I've got a couple people in the waiting, waiting room who I'll, I'll admit. Uh, let me say that anybody who wants to comment, uh, please put your name in the chat box, chat, uh, and nothing else there. It's only to be used to say you want to speak. And Councillor Disorger has kindly 
uh, agreed to keep up to monitor that chat box and let me know who wants to speak. So, Councilor Disorder, do we have anybody there? I don't see anyone. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I see. Is this Councillor Disorder? Yes. I mean, Councillor uh, <coughs> Councillor East Coast Partnerships. That's That's a good, good. <laughs> All right. For the record, we have a full house. I'm here, but it I it won't let me change my name, so someone else has to do it. All right. I, I'm a little <laughs> I'm a little engaged right now, so we'll let. All right. Uh, I know somebody wanted to. Uh, to comment. Uh, is she still here? Uh, phone caller, are you still around? Well, <laughs> the best laid plans. Uh, yeah, the said, iPhone oh. person's on mute. Should we unmute them? I'll try. Was it, She's having was trouble. Someone on the phone. There are two phones there. I don't. Oh, someone is writing. I am having trouble with my audio. They're going to try to log back in, but I don't know which one of the two. Okay. All which right. One of the people it was. Is Steve Capshaw? Are you there by any chance? He said he was going to try to attend. Here's someone coming back in. Mm -hmm. uh, I would do a little song and dance to fill the space, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Mayor, would you like to say a few words about this since you're here? Why, why you want to do this? <laughs> why you think it's a good idea? We'll get that started. I'm happy to do that. Uh, I proposed this back in August, I think it was, to the planning board, or at least I had an initial conversation with them. It may not have come forward in a formal way until September. And I did it primarily because that is a piece of property. It's one of the few larger pieces of property that we have in Greenfield that is available for development. Uh, and uh, many years have passed since the planning board, and I was chair at the time, uh, authorized a permit to um, to uh, Greenfield investors to build a 135,000 square foot retail store. That company has since um, uh, uh, disbanded, uh, so to speak. Um, they are removing, they are getting rid of many of their properties and they are not developing retail developments anymore. Um, uh, they let their permit, which we gave them in 2011, lapse. Um, at, well, it was in abeyance, so to speak, <laughs> uh, while the lawsuit was going on. Um, it was given to them in 2011. It took nine years, give or take, for that lawsuit against the big box to go forward. And... Um, and so in 2019, the judge ruled in favor of the planning board and the, and the group was able to go forward. They had two years to let the permit um, to exercise their uh, plan. Uh, they didn't do it within the two years, so that permit has lapsed. So that, in essence, sort of puts that uh, project to bed, so to speak. And I uh, contacted them uh, in, uh, uh, I don't know, 2021 early, just to see what their, their issues were, if they were planning on bringing it back, so forth and so on. I was told no. Uh, the company, the owner of the company, Mr. Ceruzzi, had passed away. They were attempting to sell off a lot of the properties that they owned, unbeknownst to us. In the background, they had also leased that property to a hold uh, in, I don't know what they call themselves, a hold something or other. <laughs> they are the stop and shop corporation. They are a Dutch corporation. So the property has been under lease for since uh, 2011, I think, at least. Um, so um, 
it's not clear exactly why that happened. Um, I have my own thoughts on that. Uh, it is the Stop and Shop Corporation. As far as I know, they have no interest in building a new Stop and Shop. They just don't want any other grocery stores there. That's and that's sort of a side story. The fact of the matter is the property has lain fallow for a number of years, but we have an industrial park that's built out uh, to the end. Uh, there really is no more buildable land there for significant expansion of any of the businesses that are there or to allow new businesses to come in. We have uh, at least one and probably more than one a business there that would like to expand and can't, or they are in the process of expanding on the property near the property that they're on, but that is not enough. They need additional expansion. We need good paying jobs in Greenfield. So my thought was what we would do would be rezone that property for a uh, for light industrial advanced manufacturing uh, businesses, uh, we have them. the The uh, industrial park I like to think of as a hidden secret, uh, as the advanced manufacturing hub of Western Massachusetts. Certainly one of them. Um, and uh, I think that that is one of the ways in which we can bring good paying jobs to Greenfield um, and understanding that, of course, we need retail here, but the ship for big retail businesses has sailed. Uh, the Walmarts of the world, the Targets of the world are building warehouses because they too have succumbed to the online um, online sales business. So in markets like ours, small markets, they're not building stores. And that was a message that was given to me by uh, a Mr. Hooper with Ceruzzi Investments. So um, it seemed to me that the best use, the highest and best use of that property would be to rezone it so that uh, it was more open to uh, industrial development or mostly light manufacturing. Let's call it light manufacturing, advanced manufacturing development. So that's where we're at. I proposed a rezone along with, um, but to the planning board, the planning board took that and ran with it and um, have uh, suggested that we create a additional um, planned industrial uh, zone, partly because it is so close to the highway, both Route 2 and the nexus of Route 2 and I-91, it is close to the industrial park. Now, so that's uh, where we find us today, ourselves thank today. You. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, now, I have in, I invited uh, Steve Capshaw from Valley Steel Stamping, who uh, was that has been showed up twice, and I thought he was going to show up today, but he made a compelling case for. Uh, well, let, let, let me maybe he'll show up and make it himself. I don't want to speak for him. I see uh, Stephanie Duclos uh, on uh, in the chat. Stephanie, do you want to introduce yourself? Say your name and where you where you live. Stephanie Duclos, Chapman Street, Greenfield. Okay, go. You got the floor. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I'm a little concerned with restricting it to any one. If we're going to change it, we should have a mixed use zoning inclusive of the industrial and the commercial. Um, I remember being at Super John's being incredibly angry that people did not come out and Mart was on that back. And everyone argued about why don't why don't even though people are saying retail is dead um anybody who went shopping this black friday weekend knows that that is not true um i don't think that anytime that you would want to limit anything uh, why wouldn't we give miss shaw a uh, special permit or a special use in perpetuity for the entire time he wants to keep his industry or any other person who would like to do the same in that area forever 
I don't see what the problem is. I think that if we continue to d go towards special interests, one or two people who are dictating how we're going to use our land in that area, because they're coming in with pocketfuls of wallets, and, you know, I mean, dollars and um, bringing in um, uh, essentially activists in order to fight, no disrespect to Mr. Uh, Mr. Norman, but this is one of the things he and I do disagree on that I think that any limitation that we place on any any particular area in Greenfield really shoots ourselves in the foot. And we saw that um, while we gave all our business to New Hampshire and Hadley and Northampton. It, it, you know, we're already driving people out of Greenfield with their shopping choices. It, it, the, if retail is the only thing that, that they're concerned about, well, I, I would love to see a market basket. I mean, I'm not particularly... Um, I don't. I shop at Stop and Shop because it's the closest to me. However, if I if I'm going to New Hampshire, I'm spending the rest of my money up at Market Basket and and everywhere else because it doesn't make any sense. It's it's much more expensive at Stop and Shop than any other place that I shop. And when you're living on a fixed income or when you're living in a low income, you have very limited choices. And they say, oh, you can go to BJ's and buy some clothes. You know, you go to Dollar General. Well, thank you for limiting our choices. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to be able to shop where I'd like to shop. And I think that the majority of people in Greenfield agree that one of the worst mistakes that we made was not allowing a big retailer to come in with all the restrictions we already have. That's just my opinion. I mean, we can go and give special permits to the particular people who want to do um, expansion of their business. They want to give 400 jobs. Well, where's the 400 people going to live? Are they going to drive all the way in town and spend their money? Or are they gonna go and scoot up Route 2 to wherever they live or go right over the bridge in Turner's Falls? I think we are restricting ourselves too much. I think that we're, you know, we're gonna shoot ourselves in the foot if we decide to restrict this to only one particular type of zoning. That's all I have to say, thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Stephanie. Um, we had another phoner come in. That wasn't Steve Capshaw, was it by any chance? No, I don't see anybody else in the chat. Yeah, let me just close my door. I've got a baby making a lot of noise. <sighs> well, uh, I have to say I'm disappointed that uh, the counselors uh, who had expressed strong opinions about this uh, haven't shown up uh, to weigh in. Um, but uh, if, if there's nobody else, uh, I'm inclined to uh, close the public comment period and go on with the agenda. Uh, I have, oh, here's some participants have raised their hands. Uh, the mayor, Councillor Healy, uh, the mayor has spoken, so let me, let me go to Councillor Healy. I also was a proponent of, you know, not limiting our use in that district and having more retail area. Um, you know, and it's true. I, I build manufacturing facilities for a living and, and Franklin County is scarce on good industrial land. And if we have the active, the active players that are interested in that land to expand and, and bring workers and business and people that are going to go downtown and eat lunch, and you know spend their money in town it seems like a good idea and then you know i started i started kind of analyzing greenfield a little better right so i i went to the big y plaza so i'm just going to try to make this short but it's going to be a little long so um i went to the big y plaza i saw two storefronts empty in that plaza right no retail there um and then i went over to the home depot plaza well there's two storefronts that are empty there pretty decent size uh, retail stores. Why aren't anybody move? Why isn't anybody moving into those locations? They're in an attractive area. They're on route two. Um, so, I, you know, I, I think to take out of this, we have to look at how we can attract retail to Greenfield, while we allow the people in manufacturing that are interested in building, come and build something. Um, but you also have land behind McDonald's on route two. And I think that area of Route 2 should be a big focus on where we could attract some retail business. It's in the perfect area. You get all the skiers going up in the winter that stop at the Big Y and stop in that area all winter long. 
do they do they tend to trail down route two probably not right that's less traveled area they're going straight up 91 right so um i'm i'm in favor of you know seeing manufacturing come to greenfield i think it'd be great for greenfield in the downtown area but i do think we owe it to the citizens of greenfield to find some retail stores where they could go shopping we shouldn't have to drive to hadley or Keene or winchester or any of those other areas where the the market baskets are right it's it's just too much of a burden on the citizens um so I, i'd like to talk to the mayor at some point on how we could make that route two corridor heading up towards uh ashfield in that area more attractive to retail thank you thank you i see charles uh, roberts has his hand up Thanks, Councillor uh, Elmer. Um, and Mayor, I'll let you weigh in on this as well also, but in terms of restricting the uses to planned industry, um, a lot of that has to do with the lease that's in place. And, and um, because, of, because of the lease that Stop and Shop has on that piece of property, no commercial development can come into that um, place because in, into, that, into that property because, um, because of the lease that Stop and Shop has and and the restriction that they that they have placed on any kind of commercial development there, and I believe that lease is going on for another, is it is it is it 13 years? So, so the the, the incentive behind limiting the uses is um, that are allowed on that piece of property to to uh, planned industry as opposed to commercial general commercial is it is it it it. it it provides an incentive for stop and shop to maybe consider renegotiating that lease um uh with, with Saruzi and, and potentially opening that property up to to people who would want to develop planned industry um light manufacturing um land uses there as opposed to general commercial thanks charles uh uh councillor bullock you've got your hand up yeah this um you know, so I'm I'm not against this zoning change. Um, I have like I still have some questions. I'm I'm with Derek Healy where I where I wish that we could really have like not limit the use on this area. Um, when I thought about it, I I agree that um, Steve Capshaw's had a compelling argument last month and. Um, I'm definitely in support of uh, more more business and more jobs in in Greenfield and especially the type of jobs that he was talking about where people can make a livable wage. Um, I think my con you know I my concern with this is that what this feels like we're doing and maybe it's because we're doing this in sort of like a rushed fashion is that we're not, is that we're accommodating one private business and potential contract. And we're not necessarily looking at like, what does the master plan of Greenfield look like for this space? Like what is actually the appropriate um, zoning? Not what is the appropriate zoning for this potential contract for this private business? And I mean, I do applaud the mayor. Like you, like this, she did her job, right? Like she's bringing us a business that wants to expand. That's going to go on the tax rolls. It's going to increase jobs in Greenfield. Um, and I think our job now is to sort of due diligence and say, what is the appropriate zoning for this piece of land and not who is the appropriate party to occupy that land? Um, and so that is really my question is like, I understand the the lease um, issues that are there that we've been told that um, Saruzi won't uh, won't go enter into a lease with a commercial uh, entity, but potential that doesn't mean that we can't zone it appropriate like as we want to see uh, things happen in Greenfield. Um, and the other piece of this, and I wish that Steve Capshaw was here because my other question is like, what is the guarantee that we zone this? for what he wants to do. And then he doesn't have a deal in place with Saruzi, right? And so um, that's like another question I have is like, how far along is this deal to actually to actually happen? So there's two things for me. There's, do we need to slow down and look at this as like, how do we actually wanna zone this land? 
um, not for a private contract. And then the other piece is, uh, is it even possible with the, with the landowner? Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've thought just, if I could interject a little bit, I've thought a lot about this, uh, Ceruzzi stop and shop, uh, lease deal. And it is difficult to sort out. It's hard to see how, what kind of contract could be written and how the money would work out. I, I finally decided it's not the city council's job to, to, arrange the contract between these companies it, leave it to their lawyers is my feeling uh as to the question about whether we're whether it's the appropriate kind of zoning that was actually the zoning board's job and they they approved this uh, unanimously it it it's near it's like adjacent to the existing planned industrial and it seemed like a natural extension to them in fact they were asking well what what I wish we had someone to tell us why we shouldn't do this. Anyway, Ginny, I'll get back to you, Mayor. Ginny's got her hand up. Councilor Disorder. Um, so I I think the jobs part of it, I definitely can I hear that. Um there's just a lot, as I said before, there's a lot of uses that we're actually eliminating by doing that. And um one of the the biggest needs in rural mass is for housing um that was that's allowed in in the commercial two and three families the tax revenue that would come in um from a de, from a development in there if if, if we changed it, i wonder if uh, if we changed it to um residential or um, there's a there's a good argument to be made for the tax revenue that would come in from from uh, adding residential and also that the this manufacturing that's going to go in there is 24 7 is it not um, isn't that what mr. Capshaw said it was 24 7 but I, don't. I, I have a problem with doing making the zoning change for one entity also. And we brought up a couple of things last time. I asked if there's a lease and it's, and I spoke to them at the end of the meeting last, if there's a lease and it's a million something a year that Saruzi's getting, why aren't we taxing him to the nth degree so that that is uncomfortable? Um, we also said at the end of the meeting that there's the 222 acres that's at that's Mackens at the end. I at my understanding from our last meeting was that whoever was going to, and I don't know if that's still the same, but whoever was going to buy that, that fell through. So that's 222 acres, right? And then we also we also were talking about, that's Mackin's property. We were also talking about um, the land on Factory Hollow about possibly, and I know that this would take longer, but um, uh, changing some of that in an exchange with APR. Is that, was that any of that on the table? I just wanted to throw out those thoughts, that's all. I, I took a lot a look at that that land, the the Mackin land. That's the stuff that looks like a, a war zone. It's all chewed up and it's full of holes. Yeah, that's a tough piece of land to develop. Uh, MJ, you had your hand up. I will get back to you, Mayor. <laughs> yes, I just wanted to respond to that. That uh, you know, there has been a, a lot of requests for an interest in industrial land even before Steve Capshaw was talking about his expansion of Valley Steel Stamp. Um, just to clarify that even though the Mackin parcel is 220 acres, only 88 acres of it is zoned plant industrial. And you may know that the city has been working with Mass Development and Tygen Bond have been out there trying to evaluate the feasibility of extending, creating um, an extension or what it might take to extend the industrial park into those 88 acres of Mackin land that is zoned industrial. 
And yes, if you'd like to see a, a, a challenging site to develop, let me take you to the Mackin site. Uh, because once we started to evaluate it and had the engineers take a look at the cost of restoration for the site so you could build industrial on it, uh, the price tag went up pretty significantly. There's about $9 million estimated uh, site restoration cost to get it back to a place where we could then on top of that uh, do a, uh, a three or four lot uh, industrial subdivision. And uh, yes, the Mackins had been negotiating with some a private party uh, that doesn't seem to be advancing anymore. So we are continuing to look at that site, but it is a financially and physically challenging site. That said, um, you know, uh, the Valley Steel Stamp has stayed in Greenfield, wants to stay in Greenfield, provides good jobs, works three shifts because they're they're really you know operating at full capacity. You might know that the Greenfield Redevelopment Authority just sold them a little parcel of land adjacent to their existing facility so they could try to wedge themselves into a little more use of their land and uh, keep operations there on site. Um, so it, even though Cap uh, Steve Capshaw spoke very eloquently about his need, the need extends beyond uh, Valley Steel Stamps need for industrial land. We need more industrial land in Western Massachusetts generally. And we're fortunate that we have an advanced, you know, advanced manufacturing cluster up here. And particularly with a young growing company that wants to sit tight and stay put and to grow locally. Um, so I think that beyond the Valley Steel Stamp need for expansion, we need more functional industrial land and we simply do not have it. That's why I think the French King Highway really presents a real opportunity for us to explore that with the good living wage, you know, jobs that, that we want to have, you know, manufacturing is really changing and we're looking at those jobs coming in and being a higher level than, you know, the, the, the base level of most employment in Greenfield. So I think it's really very worthy to look at this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, I see, uh, Mayor, I will get back to you, but I see a phone raising their hand. Uh, is that Steve Capshaw by any chance? No, that's me. I just wanted to add a couple of things and seeing as how it's people are getting the one turn to talk, I wanted to have an opportunity here first. Right, let, let me go back to the mayor first. Okay. Hi, Mayor, you're on. You've had your you've been patient. Uh you're muted. You're muted. And that too. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, first of all, let me start out with the good news for uh, Stephanie du Duclos. Um, and I think uh, Charles and or George or both of them can back me up on this. Uh, with regard to alternative grocery shopping that might be a little cheaper, there is a, a plan coming before the board uh, shortly um, uh, for an Aldi's out in... Um, out in the uh, uh, Rotary area, which lends credence to what Councillor Healy was saying, which is that maybe by default, if nothing else, um, our third retail, our second retail area. Uh, and you're absolutely correct. There are vacant storefronts out there. And um, from what I know from people that our office um, working with MJ, uh, have contacted, it's difficult to get the owners of that property to, <laughs> even though they say they want to lease it, <laughs> those leases are difficult to, to come by, but it doesn't mean that they aren't going to drop at some point in the near future. So, um, but I was heartened to see that, yes, there is a property out there. Uh, it's the old candlelight area, uh, that will, will, um, advance a plan for an additional grocery area. So it does speak to the fact that yes, we are able to generate both retail business, um, not, not wanting to discount our downtown, but that's a different type of retail than what I think we're talking about this evening. Uh, so we can generate both that and uh, advanced manufacturing uh, by rezoning. So that's one point I'd like to make um, to address some of the things that the people have talked about. Um, 
The other thing I think I'll go to is Councillor Bullock's questions or concerns or both. Um, I think the last thing you'd want to do is slow down this in, in one respect. Um, I mean, this has been out on the board since September, so we're in January right now. Um, but more, more importantly, uh, what is the master plan for this? Well, the one of the big pieces of our master plan is that Greenfield will be able to put forward uh, options for living wage jobs. And that is a big part of the economic development section of the master plan. Um, with regard to whether or not uh, the concern is, is it is an appropriate zone? I asked the question, why isn't it? Uh, it was once upon a time, um, uh, <laughs> commercial industrial, I believe is what it is. Uh, how, how quickly I forget, um, but I've got uh, Charles and George here to remind me. It was changed, uh, maybe it was general industrial, it was changed to commercial industrial. Um, and, and that's where we're at at this point in time. But what is the appropriate zone for it? Well, I think we've made that case. Um, it's 48 acres. It is not being rezoned for a single entity. It is being rezoned so that that particular business who has been in Greenfield for over 30 years and wants to stay here has the ability to expand. That is a, not somebody that we're taking a chance on. That is somebody who's been here and providing good jobs for a long time. He doesn't want all 48 acres. He'd be satisfied with 10 or 50, uh, you know, 10 or 11 or 12 uh, acres. It, and it's, if it becomes available to him, this is, not, this is not us rezoning it for a single individual. This is just someone who has expressed interest as MJ put it to us uh, as we've been working with him uh, about his frustration <laughs> about having to have, uh, uh, not having uh, appropriate property to do what he needs to do, which is about another 135, 130, 125, 130,000 square feet. Um, with regard to the APR property, it is just that. It is in APR. So it is a lengthy, it's not, out of the question, it's something that we should pursue in the city, uh, but it is, um, and there have been some new legislation that might make it a little easier um, to change that property over to, to industrial, but it, it's not ideal. Uh, and as MJ has pointed out, we do have the option of the, uh, and I say we, the city, we don't control it. The Mackins still do, but uh, we do have the option of the of the Mackin property, of which there's only about 80 acres that are usable. And we've been working with them, and we'll continue to work with them. But um, we, I guess, my bottom line is uh, we talk a lot about why can't we get living wage jobs in Greenfield like we used to have. And this is an opportunity to do that. Um, and I don't think it's at the expense of additional retail. We just have to be patient uh, on that because um, as I say, you know, we have you know, interest, but the retail industry has taken a hit. It's just now coming back and uh, that doesn't mean that we wouldn't also put feelers out for that as well. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, I, think I, covered, I think I covered almost everything and I'll let someone else talk. Okay, Councillor Mayo, you, you have your hands up, your hand up. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, uh, I'm a little mixed on this. Uh, I do believe that we, we need uh, more industrial, but we also need, uh, we have a, a, a huge need for uh, uh, low cost housing. And um, where are these employees uh, going to go? Are they going to live outside of town? Are they going to look for a place inside town? Um, there's, there's a great concern that there's uh, very little to choose from. 
uh, in terms of housing for those uh, for these employees. Um, uh, um, great pay or not, there is there's very little choice for housing uh, available to them. Um, so uh, I'm not ready to, uh, to say uh, I have mixed feelings on it. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. I, I do think that uh, Stephanie Duclos has uh, made some good points, um, uh, uh, similar points that I would make, uh, as well as uh, Councillor uh, DeSorga. Um, and uh, uh, I just have some mixed feelings that uh, about just giving it uh, to one person. And, and we've seen time and time again, uh, we give a permit or we rezone and then they decide, no, we don't wanna do it. And they, they go elsewhere. Um, so I'm concerned about that, um, making a deal for one person um, and then and then having them bow out. So that, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Doug. Uh, I did invite, I tried to get uh, Beat, uh, Beat Nozzle, is that their name, to uh, attend this meeting to see uh, whether they'd be interested in moving in. I, I do, I have heard, not just from the mayor, but and not just from MJ Adams, but from people who've tried to uh, start businesses, that there really is a lack of industrial space in the valley, not just in Greenfield. And the mayor made the case early on that if she could market uh, Greenfield as a place that has uh, you know industrial space for these people that are crying to expand, uh, that that would help her sell the town. Stephanie, I, I should get back to you. You've still got your hand up. Oh, um, I, I actually wanted to um, echo the same thing that Doug Mayo had said, that you're going to bring in 400 jobs. Is That's what he's promising. And of course, now we're doing this all for one or two people who are special interests, and let's call the kettle black. That there would be no, it, I don't understand what the problem is with giving special use permits to individuals. You market it any way you want. It's not just about do I have another grocery store? Where am I going to buy some clothes? I guarantee half the people don't buy their that are on this call don't buy their clothes in Greenfield. Uh, okay. it's, it, so when 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 we're putting up these industries, I have zero problem with that. I have a problem. Also, a portion of um, <clears throat> Mackins is fully protected land, um, so that's unusable. And the housing crisis is real. So 400 people with good, well, $20 an hour jobs, what I think what they're going to do is expand. They're going to be making gun, carry equipment. I've lived here with Steve Capshaw since this year, <clears throat> as long as I've lived here in Greenfield as well. But, the, but uh, I mean, do we want to run into another situation where we have to bring it back to the voters. We have to have an election so that we can use this property. If we utilize this as mixed use, leave the opportunities open for everyone. And the housing problem that we have in Greenfield currently is not going to be solved by 65 units that we're going to have above Wilson's. If you're bringing in 400, where are they going to live? Well, it's not going to be in Greenfield. Where are they going to spend their money? It's not going to be in Greenfield. Where are they going to eat their lunch? Well, the closest lunch avenue is Avenue A in Turner's Falls. So are you going to be able to entice them to come downtown? It, it, it's asinine for us to restrict anything for the use in that area that isn't already restricted because of, you know, some federal land grant or some uh, Native American lands up there. Okay. It, it, it's... You know, we really need to look at other options and, and not just be held to one particular or two particular people's interest in this town. All right. Uh, Stephanie, yeah. I, I think the mayor and MJ Adams have made the case that it's not just Steve uh, Capshaw, but let's move on. Councillor Healy, you've got your hand up. Yeah, so I just kind of want to touch base on the housing, the housing issue, right? So one, I think the improvement above Wilson's is a step in the right direction, right? So let's not let's not take that lightly because it's providing 65 units that we don't have, mixed income, 
that's 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 a big improvement for the downtown area. I, I do also want to say is there's other land in Greenfield where you can build housing. I mean, you have Sammy Kay's golf course right off Route 5 and 10, where it's all residential neighborhoods around it. And I'm sure they wouldn't want to see that zoned as an industrial area with industry moving into that. There's a lot of land there and, and there's an opportunity to build sub developments. But you have to find somebody that's going to invest in that area to build those sub developments. We have an investor that's interested in making Greenfield more providing more tax revenue and bringing more income and not just one guy. But I could tell you right now, you know, the client I'm building a building in Deerfield right now for a client. He looked in Greenfield. He could, he wanted to come to Greenfield and he couldn't. Right. Like so now he's he's building a hundred twenty thousand square foot manufacturing building in Deerfield because he couldn't find land in Greenfield. If this if this situation was here, you know, we might be talking about having another business in Greenfield. People will come. I know for a fact that, um, you know, people are looking for industrial land in this region and in Franklin County. And and the jobs are well paying jobs. They're not they're not, you know, twenty five, thirty dollar an hour jobs. That's you can make a diff, diff, decent living off of that. So. I think if we want to focus on housing, we we could look at other places like Route 5 and 10, Sammy K's Golf, you know, those areas to build large housing units. Um, there's plenty of land out there. Thank you, Councillor Healy. Have we have we talked this through? Should we move on with the agenda? Anybody else have something to say? Did Steve Capshaw show up? Oh, Charles Roberts, you've got your hand up. Yeah, just one quick word on the on the housing sort of question is that if we create 450 new jobs in Greenfield, there's gonna be a demand for housing to, to, for developers to come in and start building on some of the properties that Councilor Hill is referring to. And so it actually becomes a, uh, a, a, you know, a, a momentum gathers behind the economic engine that's created by the job to create new housing, to increase overall tax basis for the town, both commercial and residential. And so that's a win. Thanks, Chuck. Um, I, I've been saying to people, you know, there's there's two way two stories that come out of this. Uh, city council approves, or city council blocks, and I think we have to, as councilors, have to think uh, pretty hard about what our voters want. Do we do they want the city council to block this? Do they want the city council to approve it? Anyway, uh, I'm going to close unless there's someone else who wants to raise their hand, I'm going to close this part of the, oh, Jenny, do you have your hand up? Did you I, want to speak? Yes. I just, I, I, I want to just say that is allowed in this zone for him to do industry. The plant, it's, it's one of the allowed uses by special permit. And why um, whoever that is doesn't make an agreement with Ceruzzi for an option to purchase, like to find a way to contract around that. Um, maybe Ceruzzi could deed them an interest in it for, for 13 years. Um, I, I, it is allowed in the zone. We will be eliminating a lot of other things. So I, I have reservations about it. That's all. I'm done. M MJ, do you want to address that? Uh, that why don't we just allow them by special permit to build a, a light manufacturing facility there? What's yeah, I, I think that, that you heard Steve Capshaw explain at the meeting uh, a couple weeks ago that um, where there is the possibility for continued retail use on the site that might offer competition to the stop and shop uh, organization, that there would be. Um, no motivation for them to uh, exit the lease uh, earlier. It, it, the, the idea is, is that by making it clearly um, zoning that would support industrial development, um, that would give um, an opportunity for some negotiation with Stop and Shop about their long-term lease and the need to continue it uh, all the way to 2035, which is where we understand it goes to right now. And if the zoning changed and the possibility of building uh, retail that would compete with Stop and Shop were, were foreclosed by the zoning change, then there would be an opportunity in this instance to be able to negotiate an earlier uh, access to the site. It, it's a little complicated. I would I will agree with that. 
that, that essentially what we're trying to do is provide stop and shop with the surety that there's not gonna be anything that would compete against them across the street uh, by changing the zoning and by doing that, allowing the industrial uses to be able to go in there earlier than they might otherwise be able to. Okay, thank you. And I see Councilor Bullock has her hand up. Yeah, this this is this is where I'm confused, MJ. So I so I apologize if I'm asking you to reiterate exactly what you just said to me. But um, what I don't understand about this is why, if if Steve Capshaw could get a special permit and tell Saruzi that in negotiations that I have a special permit from the town, why would they not enter into a lease that would then still lock out other competitors for stop and shop because he's going to build on this 18 acres or however many acres he wanted. I like, that's the piece that I'm having a hard time understanding is like, why, do, why does the zoning need to be changed if Saruzi is going to enter into a lease with Valley Steel Stamp or with another manufacturer, with any manufacturer, any manufacturer at all, let's not say it's just this one company, but the, like, I don't understand why as a business entity, they would say, we're not going to do it unless the zoning changes. If they're entering into an entity that's doing manufacturing and not doing competition with stop, like with stop and shop. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry that um, that Steve's not here. What he what he told me, and I think what he said at the last meeting was that uh, for stop and shop. Again, I don't think this is our problem, but for stop and shop, uh, commercial is a deal breaker. They they won't get into business with him if commercial is allowed, and they would. I don't know how he structures the deal with them. They still want. He's not going to buy the whole property, so they still or on the, on the, you know, Saruzi is still seeing it as a million dollar a year, a, a, a property that's worth a million dollars a year. But again, that's their business problem and not, not ours. Um, I, I just want to, uh, I, I want to close this because we have other business to do, but I wanted to, uh, we had a letter from Isaac Moss, who was the ninth vote, uh, on that thing. And he had various reasons that he thought this was a bad idea. They were mostly sort of theoretical and political, but he did, there was a quote that stuck out to me when he wrote, I would be the last person to object to additional high paying jobs in the advanced manufacturing sector coming to Greenfield. Uh, I, uh, you know, the, the deal, the original compromise the idea of it was that money from whatever got done on French King would help defray the cost of the new library. Uh, so uh, blocking an opportunity to make to have money coming from there uh, would would not be something that he would oppose. And I, I still I'm, I'm struggling to see why we wouldn't do it. But you've all raised some interesting stuff. I think we've chewed this up enough for now. And I think we better move on to the rest of the agenda or we'll be here late. So I'm gonna close this public comment period, this informal co uh, public comment period uh, without objection and move on to the rest of the agenda. And you, you uh, planning board guys, if you wanna leave now, uh, you're welcome. Uh, the next thing we have is a motion uh, for uh, acceptance of easement for electrical service from 402 to 412 Main Street for the new Greenfield Public Library. Uh, Mayor, did you want to explain the rationale for this? Or MJ, whoever's here? I know nothing about it. Okay. Uh, the mayor put it in. Uh, Roxanne, are you still there? Can you speak to this uh, proposal? I'm here. Yes. And, and and also trying to fix dinner at the same time. So would you remind me what you just said? All right. Yeah, there's a motion. <laughs> I'm to... listening. I'm actively uh, listening. <laughs> uh, put that meal aside for a second. There was I know, you know. There's a motion for acceptance of ease, acceptance of an easement for electrical service at 402 to 412 Main Street for the new public library, which you asked on an emergency basis that be put on. Yeah. The agenda, and we're taking that up now. Well, uh, yeah. What it's for? 
so um, <laughs> it, it almost if you if you were ever to look at the full plan of the library, you would see that the the electrical service. There's a whole line of electrical service that goes through all that stuff that you're seeing on Main Street right now by the post office and whatnot. They're getting prepared for this. So um, it, it goes from the ability to do it goes from Main Street all the way back to the parking lot in the back area or what will be the parking lot back there. Yeah, there's a there's a map on page 18 if you have. Okay, you're right. You folks probably have it. Uh, yeah. in front of you or, or have access to it. The long and the short of it is uh, they, what they need in order to bring that uh, electrical service in is an easement uh, across uh, that property. And I think that's what we're talking about here. Is it not? Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. So the, uh, all, of the, all of the documentation for that has been, believe me, <laughs> as I said, I think, what, whatever it was, three banks and the utility company all had to agree that this could happen. And they have agreed that they are okay with this as long as the easement is approved. Um, and so um, that's kind of it. Uh, the easement goes along the back because that's how they're going to bring the electrical, well, from the front, from Main Street to the back. The library needs to put in the electrical service and that's how they do it by redoing that um, electrical line that goes uh, from Main Street across to the back. And there's private property owners, as I said, um, who are affected by uh, the property where they need to dig. Can I ask a, a counselor to, to read the motion on yeah. page 17? And then maybe we could dispose of this. I can read order, it. Great. It's order FY23086. Yep. Uh, the City Council, upon recommendation of Mayor Weta Gardner, that it be ordered that the City Council vote to accept an easement for electrical service at 402 and 412 Main Street, the new Greenfield Public Library. Majority vote required. Um, I don't should think I read it? You don't have to read the explanation because you just okay. got it from, from the mayor. Um, anybody want to second that? Second, disorder. Uh, any discussion? I, I think it's a very good idea for our new library to have electricity. <laughs> I, think, I, I think that's <laughs> and a good so idea. I'm going to be voting in favor. <laughs> All right. uh, any further discussion? If not, uh, can we get a voice vote? All in favor, say aye. 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 I say that passes. Okay, we will forward that to the full council with a positive recommendation. Uh, the second thing on the agenda is uh, the uh, it's the French King Highway. Um, what's the what's the sense of the room? Do you want to vote on this now? Uh, uh, we can we can send it forward to the city council with a mixed recommendation or a positive recommendation, uh, or we could postpone it. Uh, but I, I I think we've having given this some time. I think the I, I would like to have the council have a chance to discuss it, um, and I, the only way we can do that is to move it forward to them. So is there someone who would want to read this uh, motion? I can read it. Sorry, is it um, zero seven six? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, the city council moved that it be ordered that the city count that the city council of Greenfield amend the zoning map to rezone the following parcels on French King Highway, from general commercial GC to planned industrial PI one thirty two dash two R zero four dash thirty one. R04-33, R04-34, R04-36, R04-40, R04-41, R04-42, R04-44, R04-53, and R05-23, see attached map, and further amends the table of contents and index of the code, and further 
that non-substantive changes to the numbering of the ordinance be permitted in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the code of the city of Greenfield. Two thirds vote required. And we have to vote on this by February. The council has to vote on this by February 15th. Any further discussion? Uh, do we want to do this by uh, roll call? Okay. Uh, let me get the paperwork out and I'll run the roll call. Uh, hold on. Okay. Uh, Councillor Elmer, I vote aye. Councillor Bullock? Yes. Councillor Disorger? No. Councillor Healy? Abstain. Councillor Mayo? No. Okay, so we have two yeses, two noes, and an abstention. So we will forward that to the city council with a mixed uh, with a mixed vote. Okay, uh, moving on. The uh, the it's the uh, cannabis. Uh, let me just skip ahead. <coughs> Um, actually, I would like to make an amendment to this, but uh, I don't know whether do we do we enter it first and then I make an amendment. Jenny, do you know? Pardon. Say, it, say your question again. Uh, I I was hoping to make an amendment to strike some of the language at the very end that I don't uh, that was written wasn't written by a counselor and was kind of put in to our surprise. Uh, my question is, do I make that motion before we've made the motion for the, I guess we have to make the motion first and then I can make a motion to amend it? Yes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, would you, since you wrote it, would you like to read the motion? We don't have to read the whole text. Okay, what page are we on? It's on page uh, 22. Okay, hold on. One, two, two. Um, that the City Council of Greenfield amend the zoning ordinance chapter 200 section 200 uh, 17 marijuana establishments with additional language uh, attached as exhibit A and further amends the table of contents and index of the code and further that non substantive changes to the numbering of the ordinance be permitted in order that it be in compliance with the numbering format of the code of the city of Greenfield. All right, thank you. We need a second. Yeah, we need a second on that. Second. Thank you, Councilor Healy. No, that wasn't Councilor Healy, that was Councilor Mayo. Um, I, I, we're gonna open a discussion and I would like to start by suggesting an amendment, uh, which is that on page 25, uh, no, well, yeah. it's, it's disappeared. Is that, is it still there? No, that, that was my original. That was uh, my original, okay? And then what we have after that was from the planning board, which, I sent you the actual, without any cross outs, I sent that to you today, okay? Right, and I forwarded that to the whole group here. Does it, did everybody get that? Can I ask? Yeah. Uh, the, the issue is on, the, on the, the version that we were sent by the, uh, the planning director, there was a section that uh, seemed A, redundant and overly restrictive. Uh, and I was going to move that we delete it. Uh, since it's not here, maybe we don't have no, to do that. So it's, no, it's under, it's, it is the, it's, Oh, I see. It the, it's under mandatory findings. And I did speak with Eric about this today also. It's under mandatory findings. Go ahead, Phil. I'm looking for the language now. What, what page is it on? Well, it will be on this. 
it's page two on the new clean on the clean copy she sent okay it's um number it's like section two letter e d um, and e. D, yeah, d, e. d and e yeah d e f and g right i was going to move that we delete d e f and g uh, after speaking to someone from the zoning board of, board of appeals who pointed out that the last two were redundant we'd already dealt with that earlier and that the first two uh tied their hands it, it was make asking them to make judgments uh that that they normally make uh but in in a way that was restrictive so uh i would like to move that we delete those that whole section um do we have a second second mayo uh, can we do it with a voice vote all, all in favor of the uh of the amendment Raise your hand. Uh, Ginny's up. I see Healy. Are you on? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. We've got that. We passed it. All right. Moving back to the original motion as amended. Any further discussion on it? I want to thank Ginny for pulling it together. Um, uh, can we have a? Can we do that with a voice vote? All in favor of the amendment of the motion as amended, say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 That passes. Aye. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Now, the final thing on the agenda, if I can get my place. Uh, oh, that's it. We Now we can discuss. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, Doug? I'm sorry. I'm trying to get back to the top of the agenda. Uh, we've done the we've done the three motions. There's under discussion. We're not going to get to the bike lanes today, but under discussion, there's a consideration of laying out uh, Verde Drive Phase Two as a public way. I know very little about this. Is there anybody here who can speak about it? MJ or the mayor? Um, I was on the planning board when this came through. If you, I, but by all means, MJ, if you want to speak to that first. Okay. So um, when a development is finished, they ask the town to adopt uh, to adopt the street. So the city council votes for their intention to consider laying out Verde Drive Phase Two as a public way and refers to the petition to the planning board. I, my understanding from this. Let me just read. Is that what happens when we accept it? Is that we then plow the street and take over the you know the care of the street, which in the development phase is not what happens. I know I live on Silvercrest. We were responsible um, as a uh, to take care of all of our own plowing until the development was completed, and we had put the sidewalk on and that the plans were all done as planned. And once that was done, we came to, this, to the city and asked to have our street accepted. Um, and I'm assuming that this was the, that this is the same thing. Did they, did they street, accept street it? acceptance plan of Verde Drive, phase two. And I would have to trust that, that um, uh, you know, Warner has signed it, that he's finished everything. And I know they checked with us on the storm drains and everything to make sure that everything was done. You can see it goes on to explain. Um, uh, the mayor has her hand up. Maybe she can have, get right, tell us what this yeah, is. By all means. Go ahead, Mayor. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind, would you reread the um, thing just so I'm clear that it isn't more nuanced than because I think I think Councillor Disorger is correct. It's really asking for an acceptance of Verde Drive, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's the extension to Verde Drive. So if you wouldn't mind rereading it, I just want to be clear. Let me zoom up to it. Uh, there is a map. Um, there's a lot of. Uh, I'm, I'm going from the back now. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have to vote on this tonight. We're just discussing it. Um, mm -hmm. Geez, there's pages and pages of <laughs> Roxanne. I 
Oh, no, that's not your signature. Okay. <laughs> it might be. I might go back to planning board. <laughs> uh, it's, it's the order number FY23081. Uh, the city council votes their intention to consider laying out Verde, uh, Verde Drive phase two as a public way and refers to the petition to the planning board. Anybody from the planning board still here? George. George, have you gotten this yet? Has this come to the planning board? It was going to be coming uh, this Thursday, but uh, it's been bumped to our first meeting in January. Okay. All right. Well, we'll receive it then. I I, I know that street. I've ridden my bicycle around it. It looks looks ready. For, and uh, if this is the normal uh, the normal procedure, I, I see no problem with it. But but we'll get it from the planning board, and then we'll vote on it then. Yeah, I feel uh, more comfortable with that. Yeah. I, I as do I. Okay, good. Uh, let me just gonna zip all the way back up to the agenda. Uh, I think uh, is there uh, so that takes care of the agenda. Is there any new business? Is there any old business? The oh. next meeting, oh, did I hear some? No when are we going to have a TIF meeting? That's a, <laughs> well, I'm going to table that because that's not this okay. whole, let, let, let's do it. Um, we'll talk to the mayor about that another time. I'd like to uh, finish this meeting. Uh, our next meeting is January 10th, 2023 at 6 p.m. via Zoom conferencing system, unless otherwise noted. I would accept a motion for adjournment. So moved. So moved. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the meeting is closed at 714. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very Take much. Care. Thanks, everybody.